Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is Dean Tenney coming to you from my studio in fabulous Las Vegas with an explication request. Uh, we'll help you with any question from any vendor, uh, just easier if it's a Kaplan question because I can bring up the QID. Uh, you don't have to cut and paste or do any of that stuff. Uh, the best free supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. But if you don't have a Kaplan QBank, I highly recommend it as a paid supplement. Uh, I get tired of hearing people say, nobody and no vendor has questions that reflect the actual exam. Um, I'll call a BS on that. Kaplan's QBank is the best in the business. Uh, with my 10% discount code at checkout, I think you can bring in the uh, 65 or 66. I'll put this in both playlists because it's on both exams, this idea. Uh, I think you can bring it in for about 60 bucks. Don't quote me on that. Also, you can get some quick sheets. I highly recommend that as well, the Kaplan Quick Sheets. And for that commercial, uh, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look on questions, content. All right, here's the question. Over the past year, the market with a beta of one has returned 15%. So that's what the market did. A beta is based on the S&P 500. Under capital asset pricing model, you know, expected returns versus actual returns, required returns. That's what the capital asset pricing model is all about. What they're hoping is that you freak out when you see CAPM. By the way, anytime you get an acronym, I suggest you spell it out. So every time I see this, I'm going to say capital as a pricing model. Which of the following stocks would be considered overvalued? So, you know, we have uh, beta and we have alpha. You know, alpha would be the excess return over beta. And uh, alpha can be negative, right? So now what we need to do is go through these uh, stocks and compare the expected return versus the actual return to see which one of these would be considered overvalued. So that's how we're going to attack. And the test tracker requested this question. I don't know, maybe they were staring at it going, I don't know what to do. Guess B, whatever, right? So let's look at our first one. So the market returned 15% and the beta was 1.2. So I take the uh, market return, 15%, I times it by the beta of 1.2, and my expected return is 18%. However, we only got 17.5%. So a little disappointed in that. I think that was overvalued. It didn't give me the expected return or what sometimes is referred to as, if we're doing it before we make the investment, uh, the required return, right? I'd like to get some alpha as well. So A looks like the leading candidate for being overvalued. A lot, I, a lot of these questions, I like to use what I call the Sesame Street trick. One of these things is not like the other. All right, let's look at uh, LQR. It has a beta of 0.7, so it's not as volatile as the underlying market. It did 11%. And, you know, maybe you, if you're not understanding this concept of beta and this uh, capital asset pricing model, you might think that, uh, gee, they underperform. Well, let's see if they underperformed. We take the 15% times 0 0.70, and uh, the expected return was 10.5, and, and the actual return was 11 and so again, that looks like they outperform. There's a little bit of alpha there, right? You know, what we're basically doing is comparing these returns. All right, so let's look at the BED. It has a beta one and a half. So we take 15%, whoop, what happened? There we go, 15% times one and a half, and we get 22 and a half, and it got 23 and a half. So again, we had 1% of alpha there, excess return. And so we don't think that that's overvalued. Uh, in other words, we're expecting the return we're going to get based on this beta. The last one uh, has a beta of 9.9, 90% as volatile as the market. Again, if you are not don't understand capital asset pricing model, you're going to say, oh, well, 13.6 is underperformance. Well, we don't know if that's underperformance. 15 times 0.9 is 13.5, got 13.6. Uh, so again, what we're doing here is we are comparing the expected return with the actual return, right? And that is the only one that we're looking at here that the expected return was 18 and the actual return was less than that. All of the others, all of the others, let's look at the, get a different font here. All the others, you know, we got 11 and the expected return was 10 and a half. We were expecting uh, 22 and a half and we got 23 and a half. We were expecting 13 and a half and we got 13.6. And so the answer to this question, the answer to this question is choice A. Boom, boom. So I hope you found that helpful. 
Uh, I don't really think that it's going to be a big a deal. I mean, you don't think you're going to have to do math on four different very uh, answers offered to you. I think you definitely need to understand the idea of beta, a measurement of volatility as compared to the market, you know, the S&P 500, and then have a general idea of either getting better than the beta, excess return, which would be alpha, or getting less than beta, which would be kind of negative alpha, right? So the A is the one that we would consider it overvalued if it only returned seven and a half and we were expecting 18. All right, well, remember inch by inch, your 65, 66 is a cents, yard by yard, your 65, 66 is hard. And I'll see you for the next explication request.